Tesla and SpaceX are teaming up to build a next-generation electric roadster that Elon Musk says will be unlike any other car you have seen before, or will ever see again, if you could even call it a car. But then what will it be? Aside from just strapping rockets to a vehicle, SpaceX engineers have no shortage of innovations that they can bring to the automotive world. Elon says that the physics-defying acceleration will be the least interesting part of his new Roadster, which begs us to wonder, what could possibly be the most interesting part? Well, we've got a few ideas. In many ways, it was only a matter of time before the technological crossover event of the century finally took place. Elon has the most advanced electric vehicles ever made, and the world's leading rocket scientists under his umbrella. So why not bring them together? And most people might not know that we've already seen a bit of design mingling between the two companies. For example, the SpaceX Starship rocket uses battery technology from Tesla, and even has the same electric motor from the Model 3 driving its wing flaps and grid fins. On the other hand, you may have noticed more visible similarities between the Starship and the Tesla Cybertruck. Both use 300 series stainless steel for a high strength body material. But there are even more collaborations that go a bit deeper. We have heard in the past that aerodynamics research at SpaceX used to keep their rockets stable at supersonic speed has transferred over to Tesla and allowed them to continue making some of the most aerodynamic production vehicles in the world. Thermal management is also a big deal for SpaceX on both the launch and re-entry of their Falcon 9 and Dragon capsule. The lessons learned there about dealing with thousands of degrees of excess heat have gone into Tesla's battery pack design and allowed them to push for higher performance and faster charging times. Or how about navigation? The guidance systems on SpaceX vehicles dock with the International Space Station and land on floating drone ships in the sea, while Tesla vehicles can drive themselves through urban environments with minimal human oversight. It's natural to think that these two operations would have more than a bit of crossover potential. And of course, there's wireless communications technology. The SpaceX Starlink satellite constellation offers the high bandwidth communication from the ground to low Earth orbit and back again. Meanwhile, Tesla has the most connected vehicles on the market. So these are some pretty obvious technology crossovers from SpaceX, and they all make perfectly good economic sense for Tesla to adopt. But we can get into some much more outlandish space age technologies that you will definitely never find in a Model Y, but will be right at home in the most insane electric supercar ever made, which is exactly what Elon has in mind. Now, of course, we are going to talk a lot about rocket cars in this video, but before we get there, we have to spend some time on material science, which might not sound as exciting, but there are some pretty wild possibilities here that will definitely give the new Roadster that certain X factor that Elon is promising. Let's talk about the Falcon 9, the most frequently flown orbital rocket in the world. The Falcon 9 booster is capable of being launched into space coming back down for a landing, and then doing the whole thing over again. And this process can be repeated at least 20 times with the same rocket booster, maybe more. One of the ways that SpaceX accomplishes this feat is by using a special alloy of lithium and aluminum to construct the sidewalls of the Falcon 9 booster. There are two reasons that they do this. Number one is weight. Lithium is number three on the periodic table, meaning that it is one of the lightest elements in the known universe, much lighter than aluminum, which is down at number 13. So more lithium equals lower mass, and number two is strength. Adding lithium also makes the metal stronger, giving it one of the highest strength to weight ratios of any metal, and in turn allows you to use less of it. Now, of course, there's a downside. This alloy is extremely expensive to make, and it's also extremely difficult to fabricate into a component because traditional welding methods don't work. You have to use a special process called friction stir welding. But 
everything that makes this particular metal an amazing choice for the body of a rocket would make it equally amazing on the body of an electric car. Tesla could make ultra-thin outer body panels with the strength of steel and the weight of aluminum. They could even replace the inner structural components around the door frames that are typically made from high-strength steel with much lighter lithium aluminum. Overall, this metal would allow Tesla to drastically reduce the weight of the vehicle and increase range without having to sacrifice any strength or durability. Now, we can look at another component of the Falcon 9, the grid fins. These are the square metal grates that help steer the rocket booster on its journey back down through the atmosphere to a safe landing. The current Falcon 9 Block 5 uses solid titanium grid fins. Earlier versions of the rocket had aluminum fins, but they couldn't deal with the re-entry heat, so SpaceX created one of the largest single-piece cast titanium parts ever made. We know that Tesla loves big single-piece castings, right? Traditional Tesla Giga castings are made from aluminum, which has a definite advantage of being very light and resistant to corrosion. Titanium is a heavier metal, but also comes with a much higher strength rating, which can actually give titanium a slightly higher strength weight ratio than aluminum, meaning that a component of equal strength made in titanium could still weigh less overall. Titanium also scores an even higher resistance to corrosion, giving it a better chance at standing the test of time. Of course, titanium is a significantly more expensive metal than aluminum, which makes the subtle increase in material performance very difficult to justify in all but the most extreme applications, like a rocket that needs to survive re-entry from outer space 20 times. But again, considering that Elon seems hell-bent on making the most extraordinary vehicle of all time, past and future, then no expense should be spared and we can probably throw a few titanium castings into the mix. All right, let's talk about putting rocket motors into cars. Elon Musk is definitely not the first person to have this idea. Hydrogen peroxide rocket-powered drag cars were first introduced in the late 1960s and have been able to achieve quarter-mile times of less than four seconds at nearly 400 miles per hour. So these things are fast, but they are also so dangerous that most racetracks in the United States have banned rocket cars, though they are still popular in some parts of Europe. So Tesla has two major hurdles to overcome if they are going to build a rocket car that even has a hope of making it onto the streets of America. It needs to be safe, and it needs to be practical. Now, when it comes to SpaceX rocket engines, Elon does have a few to pick from, most of which being wildly impractical, but let's have some fun here. The Raptor engine is the muscle behind the world's largest and most powerful rocket, the Starship. While the Raptor does have the highest power-to-weight ratio of any rocket engine, it's still a bit too large to reasonably fit into a car. It also still has a tendency to quote-unquote fail energetically in mid-flight, so a less than ideal choice for the Roadster. Stepping down one notch, we have the Merlin 1D. This is the current workhorse of the SpaceX lineup that launches the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. The Merlin is only about the size of a large man, so it's not unreasonable to cram into the back of a sports car. Is it practical though? Of course not. Among the many logistical issues that come along with a modern rocket engine, the fuel situation is a big one. Merlin uses a dual propellant system that mixes a combustible with an oxidizer. The combustible is just refined kerosene, but the oxygen needs to be kept in a liquid form, which means that it needs to be held at cryogenic temperatures below negative 200 degrees, which would be tricky to manage in a car. Obviously, there's a long list of reasons why putting a Merlin engine in a car would be really stupid, but that's the biggest limiting factor. Moving into the world of relative possibility, we have the Draco Thruster. This is the main engine of the SpaceX Dragon capsule. It's a maneuvering thruster that allows SpaceX to change the altitude and angle of the vehicle as it moves through low Earth orbit. It is a relatively small engine that you could easily hold in your hands, and it does not require a cryogenic fuel source or even an igniter. The Draco is a hypergolic engine, which means that it uses two self-combusting propellants that spontaneously ignite when combined. 
These propellants are liquid at room temperature, which is good, but they are also incredibly toxic, which is bad. So you definitely could rig up a Tesla Roadster with Draco thrusters. That's probably possible, but you'd poison everyone downwind of the car every time you use them, so it's unlikely. Hall Effect Ion Thrusters These sound cool, right? SpaceX is using Hall Effect Thrusters on the latest version of their Starlink satellite. It's a very small and highly efficient electric engine that allows the satellite to change their altitude and orientation after being deployed from their launch vehicle. This is very high-tech stuff. The Hall Thruster uses a magnetic field to ionize a propellant and produce hot plasma, which gets fired out through the nozzle and pushes the satellite forward. Best of all, SpaceX Hall thrusters use argon gas as a fuel source. Argon is colorless, odorless, non-flammable, and non-toxic. It's also very abundant. So, is this our rocket weapon of choice for the Tesla Roadster? No. While ion thrusters have a very high level of efficiency, they also have a very low power output, meaning they don't actually have very much thrust. This is why they are only used in satellites that are already floating through space and not on more traditional launch vehicles that need to fight against Earth's gravity and atmosphere. That leaves us with our rocket winner, the humble cold gas thruster. These are used by SpaceX on the Falcon 9 rocket, and they are a key part of the maneuvering system. They are particularly useful for the flip maneuver that comes after stage separation when the booster needs to come around and point its main engines in the opposite direction to begin slowing down for re-entry. Gas thrusters are incredibly simple devices. They use compressed nitrogen as a power source, which is what the majority of Earth's atmosphere is made of. All that you have to do is use an electronically controlled valve to release the compressed gas through the thruster nozzle, and you've got an engine. Elon has said that the compressed air can be held in a carbon overwrapped pressure vessel that would replace the back seats in the conventional Roadster layout. These COPVs are widely used by SpaceX on Falcon 9, where they hold super compressed helium gas that maintains pressure inside the fuel tanks as they are emptied during flight. Tesla has already adapted the carbon wrapping method to create the rotor in their Plaid system that can survive up to 20,000 RPM without flying apart, and obviously that's going to be included in the new Roadster as well. In his simple explanation of how this system might work, Elon has said that there will be 10 of these thrusters distributed around the perimeter of the vehicle and will help not only with acceleration, but also cornering and braking. So what does this actually look like in practice? Well, we need to establish that these cold gas thrusters are not going to be the main propulsion system for the Roadster. It won't be like those rocket drag cars from earlier where the engine nozzle does all the pushing. Instead, these thrusters are going to allow the Roadster to exceed the physical limitations of traction between rubber and road. Now, other people have gone through the scientific explanation of how this works, we are not going to do that. I think that anyone who's driven a car before is familiar with what happens when you stop on the accelerator too hard. The tires are going to start spinning a lot faster than the car is actually moving, so you're ending up with a lot of wasted energy that isn't contributing to acceleration, and the more powerful the car, the more likely it is to just spin the tires and not actually go anywhere. This is less of an issue on high-performance Teslas like the Model S Plaid, because they use a highly advanced traction control system and torque vectoring in the rear motors to automatically strike that ideal balance between traction and acceleration, which is why you don't need to be a race car driver to handle a Model S Plaid, even though it's one of the fastest street legal cars in the world. But even the Plaid is still wasting a lot of potential energy in that complex battle between traction and acceleration. Have you ever gotten your car stuck in the snow? You can sit there pressing the accelerator and spinning your tires all day, but you won't get anywhere. Now, if someone comes along and starts giving your car a push at the same time you step on the pedal, all of a sudden the car is going to start moving forward and it can get unstuck. SpaceX thrusters are going to do the exact same thing for Tesla. Just provide that extra little bit of push that it needs to overcome physics. So now, instead of the traction control system applying brakes, to slow down the tire to match the speed of the car, the thruster system can increase the speed of the car to keep up with the tires. 
And that can work in all directions, not just going forward. Because traction will always be the limiting factor in any driving maneuver, if the tire starts to slip during a hard corner, then the roadster is going to drift off course. But a little sideways push in the opposite direction can balance that out. Same goes for a hard stop. Anti-lock brakes can stop the car from just skidding helplessly, but they can only handle so much. A well-timed burst of compressed gas would reduce the amount of kinetic energy that the brakes are trying to contain. Basically, any time that a conventional vehicle would use an automated system like traction control, stability control, or anti-lock braking, the SpaceX Roadster would use a cold gas thruster to accomplish the same thing, only using the opposite direction of energy. So instead of trying to slow down the tires to match the momentum of the car, the thrusters are going to accelerate the car to match the energy from the tires. And I think that's what Elon was getting at by saying the 0-60 to 60 acceleration will be the least interesting part. It's that Tesla and SpaceX can design a system that allows their Roadster to move in all directions with the absolute minimum amount of wasted energy, which essentially translates into getting from point A to point B in the least amount of time possible without literally breaking the laws of physics. Elon is saving Paradox Mode for Roadster version 3.